This girl turned out to be the youngest serial killer. She is recognized as a natural born demon. A seemingly angelic little girl killed classmates, babysitters, teachers and even her father. Young Emma cried and lied to her neighbors. She made up the story that her father was a psychopath who wanted to kill her, leading to her own father being shot dead on the spot by a neighbor. After that incident, she was adopted by her Aunt Angela for many years. By this time, she was almost an adult and about to graduate from middle school. She went from being a child to a teenager. She became mature and her expression became more indifferent. At this time, she was so cold that she strangled a cute dog. What was this dog's beef with her? Three weeks ago, because Angela's family has a baby, both couples are very busy. Aunt Robert wants to send her to boarding school for high school. Emma was not happy about it. She thinks Robert is going to kick her out of the house. But her face looks like she is happy. As a smart viewer would have guessed, Robert is going to have a bad day. Emma has inherited her grandmother's murderer gene. She's a cold-blooded psychopath by nature. No empathy and no empathy. She has no empathy and no empathy for the simple feelings of family and friendship of ordinary people. Even human life in her eyes is no different from a stone on the roadside. All the smiles on her face and the closeness she shows to other people are all pretend. Because she knows only by pretending to be a delicate little girl, she can hide the fact that she has killed five people. So the most important thing she does every day is to practice her fake smile in the mirror. Oh my god that is so cute. Oh my god that is so cute. She is also a paranoid person with a very high IQ. If anyone gets in her way of getting what she wants, she will find a way to kill anyone. Once upon a time, she pushed a classmate over a cliff for a medal. And now, she wants to be the captain of the school cheerleading squad so badly. But the teacher admired another student named Queenie Moore because even though Emma stood in the middle of the room, her expression was as stiff as a puppet. The smile on Queenie's face was much more natural and infectious. So Emma was upset and she was about to enter boarding school. A series of plans to get rid of those who stood in her way had begun to creep into Emma's mind. Today, Angela's baby was neglected. He climbed out of his nursery basket and almost fell into the pool. Emma pretended not to see it. The corner of her mouth even raised a sneer. Luckily Angela found it in time to avoid the accident. But was it really an accident? Robert even found the candy by the pool. Obviously, this is Emma's work. Her heart is still as evil as ever. At the same time, there's a big threat on her side. This threat comes from a transfer student named Kat. She's a former elementary school classmate of Emma's. Emma wants to cats what by pretending to fall down. She is familiar with all the accidents and deaths that have occurred around Emma. So she suspects that Emma is the one responsible for all the accidents. Kat is hostile to Emma the first time they met. She first mentions the classmate who fell off the cliff and Emma's father. She seems intent on exposing Emma's hypocrisy. Emma feels an unprecedented crisis from this girl. But the most important thing is that she doesn't want to go to boarding school. So what should she do? She starts causing trouble at home. For example, she poured a bunch of salt into the rice when Robert was not paying attention while he was cooking. It's so salty that people can't eat it. She turns up the stove and starts a fire while Angela and her son are being cared for. Then she pretended to appear in time to put it out. She has one purpose, to make Angela and Robert realize that she is very important in the family and won't let her leave. But that didn't change the two elders' minds. In desperation, Emma spoke to psychiatrist Diana about her plight. Diana says she did what Emma did when she was a child. It turns out that the doctor and Emma are the same kind of person. She is also a natural-born killer who can act. So what advice can she give Emma? And you are good at solving problems, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Diana's advice is simple. Just kill whoever is in your way. So after many years, Emma was in killing mode again, and her chance came soon. Through days of observation, she found out that Robert had a habit. He would go to the garage every night to fix that precious antique car. This night, another fun time for the entire cheerleading squad to have a slumber party. It was the perfect alibi for Emma. So, as soon as she pretended to leave the house, she came right back. She quietly entered the garage and turned off all the lights. Then she drops the jack. Robert was instantly crushed by the car. He screamed in pain. He soon became unconscious. 
Before he passed out, he vaguely saw a figure that looked like Emma. He also hears a pleasant whistling sound. And Emma arrives at the slumber party as fast as she can. With so many students to prove it, even if Robert had died, she would not have been suspected. But unfortunately, Robert didn't die. Even though Angela found him and saved his life, but he would be in bed for at least a few months. Emma felt very sorry for him. I can't believe it didn't kill him. And when Robert woke up, he was already suspicious of her. Although he couldn't speak, he wrote down Emma's name with a pen. Angela thought her husband was concerned about her niece. She went back and told Emma the news. Emma was so angry that she Saturday in the park all afternoon. Did Robert see her or not? Would he send her to the police? Countless questions went through her head. It seems that her skills are a bit rusty after years of not killing. She had left such a big mistake. What should she do next? Suddenly, she saw Queenie's beloved dog in front of her. So she took all her anger out on the dog. Us, Queenie was scared out of her mind because of the dog's tragic condition. She missed the cheerleader election the next day. Emma had thought that without Queenie's participation, she was sure to become the cheerleader. But things didn't work out the way she expected. The speech she had been preparing and practicing for months in front of the mirror. It didn't work out. The team voted for Queenie. Who wasn't there? She felt like a clown. Anger piled up in her chest. She started shaking her legs. Whenever this action occurs, it means she's going to kill someone. But now she's all grown up. She knows how to suppress this anger. Emma quietly waited for the right moment like a sly fox. Soon after, Robert came home from the hospital. He also hired a nanny to take care of his food and living. Emma rushed to test him by pretending to be concerned. When she was sure that Robert really thought it was an accidental failure of the jack at night. Emma put her mind at ease a little. This one time bomb didn't go off. And another time bomb is about to explode. That was cat. When she found out that Emma's and was almost crushed to death. Queenie's dog was hacked to death. She decided it was no coincidence. There were seven accidents in total. All set up by Emma. So, she confronted Emma herself. She threatened to reveal the truth to everyone. Emma laughed with mockery after hearing that. What proof do you have? Do you know what kind of people are most likely to have accidents? You're a manly idiot. Kat was stupid. So stupid that she was able to confront the killer head on. The recording device she was carrying was discovered by Emma. An angry cat even slapped Emma. Emma rushed to act in front of the teacher in anger. When she enters the infirmary for treatment, she coincidentally finds the key to the medicine cabinet. Suddenly, she has another evil idea. She steals all the epilepsy medication inside. Because Captain Queenie has photosensitive epilepsy. The next day in class, Emma sent a flashing picture to Queenie. As a result, Queenie had a seizure on the spot. Because of the lack of medication, Queenie died and Kat saw this. At the same time, Queenie's mother happened to work in the same hospital as Angela. They were talking about Queenie's puppy. The woman said that in the surveillance, a young girl was seen carrying the puppy. She also sent the video to Angela. Angela saw the video and immediately recognized the girl in the surveillance as Emma. She couldn't believe that her niece, who had always been a good girl, would do such a cruel thing. Plus, today Queenie died unexpectedly. She realized that it was not that simple. She came home from work and immediately confronted Emma. But Emma immediately began to play innocent. Her dog, that wasn't me. Okay. Even after Angela took out the video, she was still trying to defend herself. She only admitted that she took the dog because she wanted to be captain so badly. But she wasn't the one who killed the dog. And Angela can't even see this lie. Queenie died suddenly. The more Angela thought about it, the more suspicious she felt. So she searched the internet for various characteristics. She found that Emma was probably the legendary antisocial personality disorder. Then she thought about all the accidents that happened around Emma. She suddenly felt scared. Emma also did not expect. She ignored the surveillance when she stole the dog. Next, she did something stupid. Today, Robert was resting in the yard. He wanted Emma to help him go back inside. Instead, she pretended to be on the phone and ignored him. Robert struggled terribly and couldn't get up. When the nurse finished her work, she whistled excitedly again. As soon as the whistle was blown, immediately reminded Robert that the figure that night was Emma. So, that night he told Emma the truth directly. As long as she went to boarding school, he could pretend that nothing had happened because he didn't want to upset Angela either. Otherwise, 
Emma could go to jail. After hearing this, Emma had to agree to Robert's terms for the time being. The next day, Angela wanted to verify her suspicions. She is going to investigate the truth about the death of her brother, Emma's father. Before leaving, just in case, she used a hidden bear monitor and put it in Robert's room. Then she takes the baby in her arms. She goes to question the neighbor who shot Emma's father. The neighbor recounted the events of that year. He made a point of saying Emma's father had a very strange comment before he died. He said he did it to protect his daughter from harm. Hearing this, Angela understood everything. At that time, Emma must have lied and killed her father, so she rushed to her home. She had a vague sense of foreboding. She called Robert but couldn't get through to him. The cell phone monitoring network was also dark. What's going on? It turns out Emma had flipped the bear monitor over and waited for the storm to arrive. After the nanny left, Emma immediately started her plan. She first called Kat and asked her to come home and then pretended to invite her to drink hot cocoa. Apologized to Kat and this cat was really stupid. After she drank the cocoa, she fell for Emma's trap. There was a lot of sleeping pills in the cocoa. She tried to stand up but found her body was out of control. Emma began to tell the story of what she had done. She used candy to lure the child to climb into the pool and screwed a jackhammer and her Robert. She stole the school's medication, leaving Queenie without treatment. She also took Queenie's dog. Yes, she did all of this. And now she's going to burn everyone who knows about it and make Kat take the blame for her. With that, Emma skillfully dialed the police. Then she pretended to be terrified. Girl, she's in started a fire. She's attacking me. Please help me. Cat was shocked. She passed out straight away. Emma then threw gasoline all over the floor. Then she uses the baby's cries to lure Robert upstairs. Emma lit the fire and waited for the two of them to be burned to death. But just then, Angela rushed back, seeing this scene before her eyes. She already guessed that Emma was responsible. She cursed her niece as a psychotic monster. Then she rushed into the house to try to save her. But she never came out. And so, Emma plays the poor child who lost her family once again. She holds her cousin and cries in front of the police. After all is said and done, Emma showed a wicked smile again. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.